on this diagram that, that I've created, and I create these because I don't always understand the research initially, so I create these for my own, own learning, and sometimes they, they really help us for models of coaching. So on the left-hand side, that stands for cognitive, associative, and automated. And that's taken from the research done by Tim Lee and uh, Richard Smith, the motor learning research. And then you can see the words challenge point and contextual interference. Well, there's a great paper out there called the challenge point framework. And that really helps you understand at what level of challenge you should be setting players to keep them learning. And then contextual interference is taken from a lot of the research done on dynamic systems theory. Now, all that sounds well and good, but what does it mean for the golfer? So, Matthew, do you want to click like five clicks? So, I'm going to try and relate this to the lesson that, that uh, Don was giving to, to James. And what we saw was, we saw a lot of repetition. It was blocked, but we actually saw the removal of numerous distractions. So, the, the contextual interference was quite low. And what Don was doing, and you could see this by James's face, he was really stretching him cognitively. If we want to learn, cognitive stress is the way that we learn. So James was trying to find these correct movements, and he couldn't get them, and then he could, and he couldn't. And Don did a great job. He said, you know, there's the net. He took away the golf ball, so when James hit, he either wasn't hitting a ball or he couldn't see the flight. And then he progressed it by saying, and then once he's got a certain level of feel, I'll take him outside and he'll start hitting shots. And I totally agree with that. And then if you start to combine maybe where Don would have taken it in the future, and, and I'd love to have a, a conversation with him about this, Matthews then with his interleaved suggestions is like, okay, so James is going to do two or three drills where he hits a shot maybe at different speeds, maybe at 20% speed first, up to 60% speed, where does the movement break down? And then James is going to go and get up and down. And then he's going to come back, do those moves, and then he's going to hold a 10-footer. And he's not allowed back until he holds a 10-foot putt. And what that's doing, it's inducing that deeper learning because every time James comes back here, he's forgotten what he was doing to be successful. So that variability keeps the brain engaged. Now, as James would become more successful as that, we would call he started to get in, a, in an associative state of learning. So what we would do then is maybe there's not as, as much need for this block practice anymore. Maybe James is now only doing speed variability and he's starting to hit at targets or hit shapes. Because when he's got targets, guess what? The contextual interference and the challenge point have increased. And then ultimately, if James was very successful at this, the last bit, do you want to click on a few times, Matthew? You can see if we take it all the way to the end, golf course extreme. So we'd now have James on the golf course with extreme challenges like, okay, you have to make par to get onto the next hole. If you make bogey, you have to go back to the tee. If you make double bogey, you go back two tees. You've got two hours to complete nine holes. Off you go. Does his new movement pattern hold up under that? 